You. You, 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 you. You two. Guess what day it is? Pink day, baby. Let's go. Let me know what you guys think about my project. Let me know in the comment section. Smash that subscribe button. Now to the shop. What I decided to use for paint was the Modern Masters Metal Effects line. Now brace yourself, it's about to get ugly. I tried applying this with my spray gun, but it just kept nutting up on me. I was unable to thin it because the instructions say specifically, do not thin. Now you might be wondering why is he putting primer over primer? Pretty much, I just don't want the oxidizer I put on the paint later in this application process to affect sheet metal in the future. Modern Masters primer is specifically formulated to provide a barrier between the paint and the metal surface. As you would expect, the roller did not do much for getting good coverage. So I borrowed this beast. This sprayer did such a better job as you would imagine, but because it put out so much paint, it did cost some runs. Next, we're going to apply the iron paint but we won't be able to do it with this sprayer. The iron squeezed the life out of that filter and deemed the gun unusable. After heading over to my local Lowe's, I picked up an air sprayer and that seemed to do the trick. Well, until it didn't. Thankfully, by the time it didn't, I was already done using the sprayer. Now I know what you're thinking. What kind of cheap gun did I buy? Let me explain what happened. The iron in the paint acts exactly like sand acts in a sand blaster. As the sand passes through the nozzle, it pretty much erodes the tip. An eroded tip makes for a bad spray pattern. It's time. We gotta go ahead and apply our brass paint here to our iron paint and make magic happen. So I'm a little nervous. It's a big project and it can turn out completely terrible or it could be really dope. So only one way to find out. Let's get to it. Using the sea sponge helps create different depths in the paint. I'm really hoping this will create a cool effect. Really, there's no rhyme or reason how I'm putting this paint down. I'm just going with a pattern that I think might look pretty cool. You might be wondering what part I'm painting. This is my dash. I didn't really care too much for the stock dash because it's only about a three quarter of the way dash. Plus it allows me to go ahead and place my push button, shifter, start button, and my radio exactly where I want them. Well, that went pretty well. Let's go ahead and get started on the body. If somebody would have told me I'd be painting this with a sponge, I would have laughed at them when I first started this project. Now before you start laughing, let's just see how it turns out. Nikki, my beautiful assistant, has those artsy fartsy skills that I desperately need. I greatly appreciate her help. Painting this rug by hand is no easy task. Here after a little while, you see the colors coming into the dash. Let me go ahead and show you how this works. We filled our tub up with the rust activator and then we used the sponge to go ahead and apply the rust activator on the iron paint. Now that the iron paint has been treated with the rust activator, it's time to move on to the bronze paint. With the bronze paint, you have two options for aging solutions, a green and a blue. I chose to go with blue. The process for the bronze is a little different. I have a Tupperware full bronze paint. In the spray bottle, I have the blue aging solution. Using the sponge, I apply my second coat of bronze. While the bronze paint is still wet, I apply the blue aging solution. You can really start seeing the blue show through, but will it be enough? Definitely takes quite a bit more time for the iron to react. I believe the reason for this is that the iron paint was dry when we applied the rust activator. Because the iron paint wasn't having a chemical reaction, we decided to reapply the rust activator. I don't think reapplying is necessary, but patience is. Seeing that bronze paint on my Jeep reminded me of one of my favorite car colors, root beer. To me, that color looks elegant, but stays looking clean, which is important to me because I live on a dirt road and I plan on driving this thing a lot. So why didn't I go with root beer? We'll address that in a bit. But first, let's check out the grill. If I'm being honest, I'm not really digging that. This corner 
wasn't really tickling my fancy either. I'm not too sure what went wrong in these spots, but I got a couple ideas. I believe that oversaturation and gravity had a part to play. I'm pretty sure that was it. Look at that. Now that's tickling my fancy. That's definitely what I had in mind. So when it came to the Kirkcoat, I naturally had to go to Modern Masters Permacoat Extreme. The first coat goes on with the 50-50 mixture of water and paint, followed by a full strength second and third coat. Now back to why I decided to go with this paint scheme over that beautiful root beer color. It comes down to three main reasons. Reason number one, every car show I've ever been to, you have rows and rows of cars dressed in their shiny paint. But as I'm walking through the show, all the cars seem to blend together. Look, a red 69 Camaro. Oh, there's a blue one. Oh, I like that black one. Oh, here's a white one. You get the picture. I find myself at car shows checking out the patina and more oddball type vehicles. Having such a unique truck, I felt it needed a unique paint job. Reason number two. I'm no chip foos. I know I have some issues with my bodywork and this paint job will help hide it. Reason number three. For those who don't know, this was my grandpa's Jeep. He owned it since I was born and then when he passed, I inherited it. Anyway, to pay tribute to him, I wanted to incorporate blue into the paint scheme because blue was his favorite color. Although blue is one of my favorite colors, it's not typically my favorite car color choice. Plus the color combination will stay looking clean despite my dirt road. All right, tape's off. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this beast turned out. Really digging that contrast with the grill and then the rusty bits. Look at that. Hear me approves. I think I knocked my goals out of the park. First, I don't think you're gonna see another one like this. Go to a bunch of car shows and you'll never see a FC that looks quite like this. Heck, it's rare to even see a FC at any car show, let alone one that looks like this. Reason number two, trust me. I've looked for some of the imperfections, I know exactly where they're at, and I still have a hard time pointing them out. The last goal, we got some blue in the paint scheme. I'll tell you what, it's my favorite portion of the paint. If you wanna see more about this project or any of the other projects I'm doing, Go ahead and smash that subscribe button, ring that little bell, and throw me a like. Stoke is high right now. Tell you what. Until next time, get out of the shop and build something.